This week on LSMN Overtime, we'll be looking at soccer playoffs, a Louisville coach is back where she started, and we'll introduce you to a lesser known LISD sport. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of LSMN Overtime. I'm Tori Stevens, and let's start off with some boys soccer. The Louisville Fighting Farmers faced the Dallas Jesuit Rangers on Tuesday in the second round of the state playoffs. The game started off slow as neither team was making real progress down the field. Both teams lost possession of the ball a few times trying to move downfield towards the goal. On a deflected cross to two on Jesuit, Louisville's 14 committed a foul trying to tackle from behind. Louisville would then make an effort to attack but could not finish. Coming back from halftime, Louisville quickly moved down the field. Louisville threw the ball in for a chance at a goal, but it was saved by the keeper. Louisville's 14 would later take a shot at the goal but overshoot it. Regulation ended at 0-0 and went to overtime. A last second pass went to DJ Kulai, allowing him to take an open shot to make the score 1-0. With two minutes left into overtime, Jesuit would have one last attempt at the goal, but didn't go anywhere. Louisville finished the game with a victory and a spot in the third round of the playoffs. That's all for the men's playoffs, now onto the girls' side. Marcus defeated Arlington, winning 5-1, while Flower Mound shut out Arlington Martin, winning 6-0. The Marauders girls soccer team has been rolling through the playoffs, but they've got a big district rivalry coming up this week. DJ Crickshin has more with this week's Coach's Corner. I'm here with Marcus head girls soccer coach, Chad Hobbs. Coach Hobbs, thanks for joining us today, and I want to start off by congratulating you on making it the playoffs this year in a very tough district. You've been ranked in the top 10 of the state for the, nearly the entire year, but so has Flower Mound and even Hebron. What has this season been like having to play such difficult competition? Well, it's, it's been challenging. Um, you know, our district is, is like you said, full of, of very quality teams, very competitive teams. Um, I think the benefit of playing in such a challenging district is it definitely prepares you for the playoffs. Well, at least you're prepared. Friday night's regional quarterfinal is a rivalry matchup with Flower Mound that LSMN will be live streaming from Southlake. How do your performances against Flower Mound this season help prepare you for this upcoming playoff match? Well, I mean, they're always great games. Um, you know, Flower Mound has some outstanding players and, and it's always a great matchup. Um, we look forward to it again. Um, you know, we, we faced Flower Mound last year in the regional finals. And, you know, they, they had an, an outstanding game that game and, and, you know, knocked us off of the playoffs and then went on to win state. And so um, we're very much looking forward to the opportunity to get back on the field in the playoff situation with them again. Sounds like you're excited. Caroline Castens, Maddie Reynolds, and Paige Dixon all had big, big games Tuesday night. What does it mean to have such offensive weapons on your roster? Well, I think this team is, is pretty unique. Um, you know, in the past, we've had, you know, some, some really outstanding attacking players, um, but this team is, is really balanced. Um, we, we can score from pretty much every position, and I think that, that has been one of our keys to our success this season is teams can't really key on one or two players to try and stop them, to stop our, you know, attacking prowess. And so um, we, we look forward to getting as many players in the attack as we can, and, you know, they, they share – the opportunities and, and the responsibilities of trying to score goals. Balance is always a good thing. Both your team and Flower Mound scored a lot of goals Tuesday night. Are you expecting the match to be a shootout? Well, I mean, when we usually play Flower Mound, you know, both groups have, you know, very solid defensives, good goalkeepers, um, very tactically organized. So, you know, I don't, I don't expect, you know, a high scoring game. Um, you know, I, I expect a, a very hard fought, challenging game. Both teams very organized. Um, trying to key on, trying to uh, eliminate mistakes and, you know, find those little key moments of, of space or, you know, capitalize on a mistake that could be, you know, the, the difference in the match. Well, can't wait to see the game. Coach Hobbs, thanks for joining us this week and good luck to you and your team Friday night. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Flower Mound High School girls runners are shattering records left and right at the New Balance Indoor Nationals. Alexander Fox, Samantha Humphreys, Nicole Humphreys, and Natalie Cook broke the high school indoor record by more than 10 seconds in the 4 by one mile relay. Natalie Cook won the two-mile event with the second fastest high school girls two-mile ever. 
at 9 minutes and 44 seconds. The Marcus Marauders hosted the Capel Cowboys the Tuesday night. Marcus had a busy start to the game, scoring five runs in the first inning. Alone, starting with Nathan Harmon's RBI to bring Jake Dewar home, giving the Marauders the first score of the game. Quickly followed by Jackson, Jackson Huffman stealing home later in the inning, put the Marauders up 2-0. Capel tried to lead a comeback against the Marauders, but ended up short, ending the game at 6-4. Marcus remains undefeated in district play and is in top 15 of all of Texas. The Marauders and Cowboys will face off again on Friday, April 1st. In other scores around the district, Flower Mound defeated Louisville 7-2, Hebron fell to Plano 7-9, and the Colony ultimately fell to Sherman, losing 12-4. The Lady Farmers hosted the 4-3 Lady Hawks. The Lady Farmers are trying to snap a two-game losing streak. Hebron struck first in the opening frame, capitalizing on farmer mistakes with two quick runs. The Lady Farmers got on board in the third inning when Riley Bryce reached base on an error, scoring Bailey Pope. Looseville tacked on another run in the fifth inning when Jaden Grandison scored off a nice triple from Paisley Allen. Looseville was down by two, but the Lady Hawks put up two more runs, including a six-inning RBI double for Lucy Crowder. Putting the game out of reach, Hebron handed Looseville their third loss in a row, winning four to two. In other softball scores, Marcus ran away from Plano East, winning 15 to three. Flower Mound defeated the Capel 12 to two, and the Colony beat Denison seven to two. The Lady Farmer softball program has a unique story behind their success. This year, here's Brayden Linker with the story. Former Louisville alum Coach Albert talks about how she feels being a former LHS student turned head coach. Leaving Louisville was very hard the first time. Like It was incredibly difficult for me, um, but I knew it was something that needed to be done if I wanted to ever come back here and be a head coach. And then once I got the call while I was at Memorial, um, I knew it was just, I, I don't call it a God thing, but it was just, I knew I had to come back. Um, it means a lot because she knows the history of the school. She's been through the program. She knows what it takes, like she knows what it means to be a fighting farmer, so it's pretty cool. The team started out their district games winning four straight, which is a surprise being that they are a very young and inexperienced team. I think we've been able to do um, far and away better than we thought we would. Just changing their mindset around like, you are a talented team, you are able to do this, you can win ball games. Um, I think that kind of lights a fire under them a little bit. Nothing's free. Like if you want something, you got to go out and work for it. You got to win it. Um, you got to earn it. And I think that they are, instead of being intimidated by that, I think they embrace that. Um, and I think they're surprising themselves. Uh, this team, this year, we play for the team, not for ourselves. So we all want to win. So we're a very good group together. Like we all cheer each other on. We're very hyped for each other. You make any play and they're always excited no matter how much you care for it. We all care. Coach Albert looks determined to build a winning culture around this young team. For LSM in Overtime, I'm Braden Linker. The 20 Boys District Golf Championship, Marcus High School tied for first, shooting 12 over par, and the Hawks followed closely behind in third with 18 over par. With Vincent Hancock's recent gold medal placement in the 2020 Olympic Games, skeet shooting has had a recent surge in public interest. But many people don't know that skeet shooting has been in Flower Mound for much longer. Here's Brody Lewis with the story. The <laughs> Flower Mound High School clay target team has been in existence for eight, maybe nine years. Skeet shooting was invented in 1920 and has been a part of the Olympic Games since 1968. Skeet, you have eight different stations and they're all different angles. So you start at station one, shoot two singles, then a pair. Station two, two singles and a pair. Um, then you go around, shoot singles, and you do the same thing Just, for the uh, other end. This one, spotlight, and, and then the uh, The middle station eight. While skate is the most popular event, there are actually multiple events that athletes can participate in. Trap, which is five stations, and the birds can either come out straight, left, or right every single time, and you shoot five birds at each station. And Sporting Clays is different throwers throughout 10 to 12 stations with a different combination of singles or pairs. And just because you've never shot a gun before doesn't mean you aren't welcome on the team. My favorite thing is probably the community. Um, all the people that are here and all the friends that I've made, everyone that I've met at meets, 
the old people, the young people, and everyone in between. The like, environment and the community, everyone is so friendly and so nice. And even if you're doing something wrong, like someone will help you out. And I've met so many different people throughout this sport, young and old. They're all amazing. I love it. For LSM and Overtime, I'm Brody Lewis. Along with Flower Mound, LASD clay target teams competed Saturday at the Alpine Spring Chiller Tournament. Within Sporting Clays, Marcus placed second overall. Marcus even had a standout shooter, Trip Cuban, who placed second individually for Sporting Clays. Our district has outstanding girls soccer teams. Let's see how the guys hold up. Alex Alazar has more on a specific team in this week's Spotlight. Hey Alex, isn't it amazing how there's so many teams still in the playoffs? It really is impressive uh, how much talent we have in the district this year and one of the teams that still is in the playoffs is Louisville who happens to be the focus of our Spotlight this week. Louisville has won six of their last seven games including three playoff victories. These game, during these games, Louisville has scored an impressive 16 goals while only allowing seven with three shutouts. After three really close playoff wins, the Farmers have managed to turn a lot of heads. Louisville hopes to continue their winning ways as they take on McKinney Boyd Friday night in McKinney. For LSMN Overtime, I'm Alex Salazar. Now back over to the sports desk. Make sure to check out this week's LSMN Game of the Week on Friday, April 1st at Dragon Stadium in Southlake, where Marcus goes up against Flower Mound. A mound showdown and a third round playoff soccer game all wrapped up into one. You can always watch it right here on YouTube at LSD AV Productions. For LSMN Overtime, I'm Tori Stevens. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.